Joining me now is Forbes senior contributor, Adam Minsky. Adam, I have had many debt ceiling conversations over the past few months, and I'm so excited to finally loop in our resident student loan expert to weigh in. So as we know, the much talked about debt ceiling deal did come with some caveats regarding student loan payments and things like that. Can you talk about how student loans, student debts made it into the conversation here? Why were GOP lawmakers trying to use the debt ceiling to force President Biden to cancel his own student debt relief plan? Yeah. So, you know, I think House Republicans really wanted to use the prospect of raising the debt ceiling to extract concessions from the Biden administration and cut or gut uh, a, a multitude of, of programs. Uh, in the debt ceiling bill that the House GOP passed a few weeks ago uh, on a partisan basis, uh, that bill uh, would have completely repealed President Biden's one-time student loan forgiveness plan and also reversed Biden's latest extension of the student loan pause, which advocates had warned could have catastrophic uh, and dire consequences for millions of borrowers. So they really wanted to cut back uh, the Biden administration's student debt initiatives. What end up making it into the final compromise is not uh, as uh, bad for borrowers uh, as that initial bill was. Uh, Biden has managed to preserve his student loan forgiveness plan, still blocked by federal courts, and the Supreme Court still has to weigh in on it. Uh, but as of right now, the plan has, uh, has not been repealed legislatively. And what it does do is it locks in uh, the uh, end of the student loan pause on the same timeline that the Biden administration had already been publicly announcing would happen. 60 days after June 30th is when the student loan pause uh, will end. Let's talk about the good news for borrowers first. This impacts close to 40 million borrowers to receive $10,000 or $20,000 in federal student loan forgiveness. And they must be breathing a sigh of relief that this is saved for now. But how was President Biden able to do this? Do you have any insight how he was able to salvage this staple of his presidency? We don't know exactly what happened behind the scenes in closed door negotiations, but uh, there were reports that there were some red lines for the administration. Uh, they did not want to repeal the signature legislative achievements, uh, such as core elements of the Inflation Reduction Act or the bipartisan infrastructure bill and his signature one time student loan forgiveness plan, which would wipe out up to $20,000 in federal student loan debt, was also uh, uh, a, a major. Uh, uh, you know, policy victory for the administration if the Supreme Court allows it to proceed. Uh, so it sounds like that was a red line for the administration and they did not want to give that up as part of any other concessions. So this is saved for now, but is it saved for good? That's the big question. So it does look like uh, that Biden has managed to uh, to prevent a legislative repeal of his student loan forgiveness plan. Uh, but ultimately, the fate of the plan is still in the hands of the Supreme Court. Uh, there are two legal challenges before the court. The court heard oral arguments back in February. A decision is expected sometime in June, could come any day, uh, but should, uh, should almost certainly arrive within the next few weeks, and ultimately the court will decide whether or not this program can proceed or not. A lot of borrower advocacy groups and uh, some progressives uh, in Congress have urged the Biden administration to have a backup plan uh, uh, ready to go just in case the court winds up striking down the program. But so far, at least publicly, top administration officials have not indicated that there is a backup plan in the works. So if you're a barber relying or waiting on that relief, you know, you can rest easy for now, but still wait for June to see that final decision. Now, I do want to talk about some maybe not so good news for borrowers when it comes to this debt ceiling bill, and that is the student loan payment pause is officially being lifted. What can you tell us? That's correct. So the Biden administration had previously said that the student loan payment pause would end uh, either 60 days after June 30th or the date that the Supreme Court rules 
on the debt relief plan. Uh, what the debt ceiling bill does is it effectively codifies what the administration has already been saying publicly. Some might argue that's no big deal. The problem, however, is that it does remove the administration's ability to extend the relief again if the Supreme Court issues an adverse decision and the administration has tied uh, the student loan pause to the debt relief that's before the Supreme Court. The argument is that folks should be able to receive that debt relief before they're forced to restart their payments after over three years of the moratorium. So what the debt ceiling bill does is it prevents any further extension. Now, if there's a new emergency, uh, a new crisis, the administration will be allowed to issue a new pause and the debt ceiling bill does allow him to do that. But this does kind of set in stone that payments uh, are going to restart later this summer, regardless of what happens with the Supreme Court.